Hello and welcome to How to Teach Online, Quick Relief for Music Educators. This is a workshop based on the art of freedom, my unique holistic approach to musical living and artistic mastery. This class is designed for music educators of all kinds, from private studio teachers to university professors who are being affected these days by our current health crisis um, caused by coronavirus. This is, um, we, as we all know, this is a very strange time. It's serious and it's kind of crazy making. I have a lot of friends who are musicians and are kind of scrambling, trying to figure out how they are going to keep up their income and stay connected with their students. Um, University teachers um, are having to move their classes into group classes online and private studio, studio teachers can't have their in-person clients come to their homes anymore. So this is an unprecedented situation and um, it's a little scary and worrisome for a lot of musicians. So I'm Jennifer Roy Francoli and um, if we haven't met yet, it's my specialty to help musicians play better and feel better. So I'm here today to offer you what I've learned over the last eight years of teaching online. And um, I just wanna make sure you feel comfortable and that you're in the right place, not wasting your time here. So, because I am gonna go probably for about an hour here. So you are in the right place now, today, or watching the replay. If you're at all worried about losing income and your ability to teach your students effectively. You're in the right place if you're overwhelmed by the technology, trying to figure out how to do everything. And maybe you're a little freaked out or a lot freaked out about being isolated and having to figure all of this out on your own. But my promise to you today is that you will feel better about diving into this into this adventure with less anxiety after we're done with this little training here. And you'll get a lot of value out of the class. Um, I've spent you know, a while putting this together for you at the last moment as this is all happening kind of in a rush. Um, but I'm gonna share with you the things that I've been doing that have worked the best, the, you know, just the basics to really get you started with as much ease as possible. I'm gonna share with you some of the basic things that work for me, okay? In return, I do ask that you are here with an open mind, wanting to listen and, you know, just take in the information, take what you like and um, do with it as you wish. Um, and let's see, you might want to take a few notes. Um, they're, they're not going to be tons of details, but you might want to take some notes because I am going to be giving you something that you can implement right away. And you might want to get rid of distractions like turning off your cell phone or closing other stuff in your browser. And um, if you've got notifications on Facebook, I don't know if you can turn those off for now, but Anyway, it is, it's just gonna help you focus better on what I'm giving you today. So, just a few suggestions. During this class, you're going to learn the following. You're going to learn three big mistakes to avoid as you dive into online teaching. That's gonna be in part one. In part two, I'm going to share with you my, my three-step strategy for getting your online teaching working for you fast. At the end of the class, I am going to tell you about how you can learn more and get started applying the ideas I've shared right away. And I'm also going to offer a valuable bonus that will only be available for a limited time. So please make sure you stay until the end of this if you want to get that. Um, this class is, like I said, it's gonna be about an hour and it, the replay will be here. I'm gonna leave it up on my page and just know that uh, what I'm offering it today is, you know, it's gonna be limited, <laughs> so stay. Um, in case you're new to my world, because this page is public and anybody in the world can see this anytime, if you, we haven't met yet, um, I am a professional musician, I'm a violinist, you can 
see <laughs> over there, my violin. Um, I perform and I teach, and I'm also a certified Alexander Technique teacher. I specialize, as I said before, in helping musicians to feel better in mind, body, and spirit, and how to bring their whole self into their music making so that they enjoy themselves with what they're doing and also you know, just make much better music because their skills improve with the things that I share. Um, I help people overcome physical and emotional blockages to success and that's a big part of what we need these days as we're transitioning into a completely different way of doing things these days. We need to have a sense of ourselves as being whole and grounded and centered so that we can tackle whatever we need to tackle as it comes up with peace of mind and quick quickness of mind also so you can respond quickly to the changing environment as best you possibly can. So I have been teaching musicians for over 20 years, uh, both privately at home and at various institutions. I was on the faculty of the Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, that's CCM, at the University of Cincinnati. And I was there until 2017. I've also taught at Xavier University. And I've been teaching, like, like I said, exclusively online with my own business online since 2018. So it's been two years of exclusive online teaching. And I've been doing you know, all kinds of online teaching, um, especially with my Alexander practice since, well, I guess, the last, uh, what is it, 2012, so like eight years. And online, I offer private coaching for musicians, as well as a group program called Alexander Musicians. And we meet online. We have students from all over the world. We come together a couple times a week, and uh, we have a lot of fun while we learn very important things. So that's what I do. And um, the biggest problems that I help musicians with are mindset, pain, excess tension, performance anxiety, technical skills, and sharing their hearts through art. And a lot of my students are music educators as well as performers and also quite a few amateurs. So anybody who loves making music, um, I help them. <laughs> I, I do not work directly with children anymore. I used to, but the teaching that I've developed over time has really um, tended to be more for adults. So I'm really teaching, um, yeah, adults. <laughs> Um, just really, really briefly, um, a little background. I was a performer for much of my life and um, internationally and very successful. I won a lot of competitions and blah, blah, blah. Um, and I started teaching quite a while ago. Um, and for a lot of reasons, I ended up transitioning my Alexander work to online. And one of the main reasons that I did that was as I was teaching in a, in, a, in a lot of groups, I realized more and more that what I was teaching them was effective even without using my hands. So I started experimenting in 2012 with not using my hands. And so I learned how to teach something that could seem impossible to teach online. You know, Alexander Technique is traditionally taught touching people. It's a hands-on technique, but Alexander learned how to, you know, he figured everything out for himself by himself without somebody's hands on him. And so he told us exactly what he was thinking and how he developed his process, how he discovered what he discovered and how he made the changes in himself. So I learned how to think differently about how I was teaching so that I could help my students without using my hands. And then I realized that I could just do that over the internet instead of being in the same room. And it gave me a lot more freedom to teach people anywhere in the world. And um, it was very important for me at the time when I transitioned to full-time online teaching because I was going through a divorce and I needed to build up my income. So that's what I chose to do. And it turned out to be a very good decision because I've been doing you know, quite well online teaching this way. So I'm just giving you that little bit of background because as a music teacher, you may feel strongly that you need to be able to use your hands. A lot of music teachers use their hands to guide their students. 
and you may feel a little strapped and um, limited by not being able to use your hands. But that's something that you can get used to really quickly and really easily. So don't worry about not being able to use your hands. Um, you can really, really do just as effective teaching over the internet, I promise. You're just going to have to start thinking about it creatively and thinking about it differently. Um, you'll have to investigate. It may be actually a really good thing because you're going to have to investigate what is most important to you as a music teacher, why you're doing it, and what you really want to convey to people through your teaching. And it's not what comes through your hands. It's, it's really, truly, I believe, what comes from your heart and that you communicate through your presence, through your words, through your teaching, and some very often for music teachers, through the music that you make and how you're demonstrating and uh, modeling what you want your students to learn. That's very important. And you can do all of that. This is my virtual studio here. I stand back there and I play my violin in, in front of the screen for my classes, for my students, for the my, my Facebook group. I just did it yesterday on my personal page on Facebook. So you can do just about anything online that you've been doing in the studio. Now, for, in person. For some people, for some instruments, it may be a little more challenging, like with a piano, uh, but you can get around these problems. And I'm here to tell you it's not so hard. It's really not so hard, okay? Um, some of the benefits I've gotten from teaching online, um, I can teach people who live farther away, so it's easier for students and me to connect. So that's actually a benefit. You, do, you can save a ton of time and energy from having to drive to a studio. Uh, people are, may actually appreciate that. So there's gonna be less back and forth, less commuting, and uh, I can give my students handouts and extra materials, self-study courses and things really easily over the internet. And a really important thing that we can do for people is that we can foster a community and stay in touch on a daily basis. So there's so much that's possible, okay? Now, I'm gonna dive into the teaching section of this class. And so the first part of this class is where I wanna share with you three big mistakes to avoid as you transition into teaching online. Second part, I'm gonna give you my three-step strategy for getting your online teaching working for you fast. So let's just dive into part one, which is three big mistakes to avoid as you transition. Mistake number one, panic. Letting your mind spin out of control. You don't wanna do that. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious why you don't want to go into a panic mode. It's not going to be good for you. It's not going to be good for your students. It's going to prevent you from learning as easily as you could if you're in a stressed, worried, anxious mode or if you're angry about the situation. And I'm sure some people watching me right now are really angry about some of the things that are happening and some of the things that I'm sharing. But that's part of life. So don't, you just don't have to go there. You know why you don't wanna go there? Because you're, if you're feeling that way, if you're feeling stressed and anxious and tight, your body gets stressed and anxious and tight and your thinking gets narrow-minded you're thinking in a way that shuts you down and it really does make it harder to think. And when you're learning how to teach online and you've never done it before and you're prejudiced against it, and a lot of people are prejudiced against online teaching. And, and I understand that. I used to be one of those people. I used to hate the internet. I resisted email until I couldn't anymore. Facebook. I laughed at people using Facebook. I wanted nothing to do with Facebook. So I get it. I really, really get it. My life happened in a way such that I just found myself here. And now I'm in a situation where I can help a lot of people who are now being forced to use the internet if they want to continue to earn a living and they want to continue to help the students that they already have. We don't have to abandon our students just because we need to go online now. 
We have incredible power to help people through the internet now. So let's use it. And we have to not panic and not let our negative thoughts take over because it's not helpful for us and it's not helpful for the world. It's not helpful for our students. So that's mistake number one, to go into a negative thinking mode. You don't want to go there. It's not good for anybody. And mistake number two. This is very common. We all do it. And I am number one guilty person of this one, trying to do too much at once. Don't try to learn everything at once. It's going to be too much. It's going to be too much. Just you can do everything you need to do really easily with just the basics. You can get started with the basics really easily. So my huge suggestion to you all out there is to simplify. Just do the minimum. Ask yourself every day, what's the minimum that I need to do to get this moving without stressing myself out? Because that's, by the way, we have to be careful about our immune systems. So negative thinking is not good for your immune system. Positive, optimistic, creative thinking with an open mind, open to learning new ways of doing things. That is allowing our energy to flow more easily. And we have to do whatever we can to stay healthy during this health crisis. So I want to emphasize that simplifying and doing less, but organ in an organized way that you can be efficient and effective with your time is gonna be more and more and more important. Okay, so you want to learn, ask yourself, what if this were easy? What's the minimum that I need to do to get this going? Okay, find the easy way. Mistake number three, this is a big one, people. <laughs> Assuming that the quality of your teaching is going to suffer just because you can't be in the same room with somebody. That's a huge assumption, and I, I don't buy it. It's not been my experience, and it's based on sound intellectual thinking about things, about principles, about going back to fundamental principles of the things that I teach and really thinking deeply about these things and really asking myself, what am I doing? Why am I doing it? And does it make sense? And how can I do it? Okay. So don't assume that your teaching is going to suffer. Now, as a musician, I mean, there are obviously things that are not going to be up to the same standard. For instance, the sound quality, all right? That's just a given. And there is something special about being in the same room with somebody. There is absolutely no doubt about that. There's nothing like the warmth of an, a person in the same room and that energy that you can have together when you are making music together, when you're learning and enjoying art and being creative together. There's nothing quite like that when you're in the same room. However, there are real advantages to teaching online that I've discovered over the years. And just because the sound quality is not as good over Zoom, you just kind of have to get used to that. That's just the way it is. But you don't have to worry about that because you can still develop your sense of hearing so that you can hear the nuances. You won't be able to do this at first because you'll probably have a rejection to the sound quality, <clears throat> but the more you do it, the more you're gonna be able to hear the subtleties. I promise, when you start doing this, you're gonna hear better because you're gonna to have to hear differently. <clears throat> Excuse me. We get better at what we practice. At first, you may be turned off by the sound quality and it's likely, but I promise if you focus on why you're doing it and what you're doing and you are open to hearing what you need to hear, you will hear everything that you need to hear. It's just gonna be a little different, okay? So let's move on to the second part of this teaching section or the second section of my teaching. <laughs> this is my three-step strategy that I'm gonna give you today. Um, to get your online teaching studio on the internet fast, okay? The first thing, and I've touched on this already, but the first thing is that you really need to get in the right frame of mind and body for learning the things that you need to learn. And 
you can help your students get in the, fr the right frame of mind and body to help them be open to learning over the internet. It's different. There's no doubt about it. It is different, but that doesn't make it worse. There are benefits. And in some ways, it can be better, believe it or not. Just keep an open mind, all right? So what I want to share with you is, uh, yes, okay, sorry. I'm just checking my notes for a moment. What I want to share with you is something that, uh, the first part of this three-step strategy um, to get into the right frame of mind and body. I really want to share it with you right now, even though it's something that I teach all the time. Uh, a lot of people watching this video today are going to be new and have never come into contact with my work before. So it's very, very important to me that everybody watching has a sense of what's possible, what you can do with your thinking, to improve your state of being. And I don't like how I just said that. It's not about improving your state of being. It's about becoming a little more aware, a little more conscious, and accessing some ease. So you're exercising some choice in how you feel in your body, and above all, what you notice and how you react to what you're noticing. So the specific tool that I want to give you right now is called the cycle. You can also learn the cycle on YouTube. I'm going to keep this short, give you a super basic intro, but it's so important that I feel like I really want to give this to everybody watching. Because if you do the cycle, this is a two minute etude. It's a primal Alexander etude that's an outgrowth of the Alexander technique created by Neo Morales. If you do this etude, it's, by the way, the best, the, this is the best warm up I know before you practice, before you dive into practicing your instrument. If you do the cycle, you do this etude, I promise you're going to have a different experience and you can share this with your students too. So here's how we do the cycle. And again, it may seem like it takes a long time, but it's really only two minutes, three minutes maximum. Okay, so bear with me. This could be the most important part of this presentation. <laughs> it's quite possible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, sip of water here. So we're going to do the cycle. I would like us to hold our fingers one at a time. We're going to cycle through all 10 fingers. We're going to hold the thumb to begin with, very softly, very gently, no squeezing, gripping, very soft, and then you rest your arms, okay? I want you to rest your arms and after, I'm gonna to count to four on each finger. After each number, we're going to ask this one question, each time the same question. And I want you to ask it with an open mind you throw the question up and out there. I want you to keep your eyes open. When you do this on your own, like now, I'm going to say the numbers out loud. You're going to say the numbers out loud at home when you practice. It's important. And then you can ask the question out loud the first few times that you do it, but then you want to do that mentally. Okay, so starting with the thumb, counting to four. One. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Two, where else do I seem a bit easy? Three, where else do I seem a bit easy? Four, where else do I seem a bit easy? Good, index finger. One, where else do I seem a bit easy? Two, where else do I seem a bit easy? Three, where else do I seem a bit easy? Four, where else do I seem a bit easy? Middle finger, one, where else do I seem a bit easy? Two, where else do I seem a bit easy? Three, where else do I seem a bit easy? 
four. Where else do I seem a bit easy? And I apologize, I apologize if I lose track of the numbers. Sometimes I do lose track, but it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Moving on to the ring finger. Keep your eyes open. One. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Two. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Three. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Four. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Good. Pinky. One. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Two. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Three. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Four. Where else do I seem a bit easy? Good. Other hand. Thumb. Now on this hand, I'm going to repeat the question a couple more times and then I will stop with the question. And you just ask the question for yourself mentally or out loud if you prefer but use the exact words I'm giving you. This is very important. Write them down. Don't experiment when you're first learning this, okay? One, where else do I seem a bit easy? Two, where else do I seem a bit easy? Three, where else? Index finger, one. Two. Three. Four. Middle finger. One. Where else? Two. Three, four, good, ring finger. Remember to keep your eyes open even if you're getting sleepy. One, two, three, four. And pinky, one, two, three, four. Good. So that's the complete cycle. Primal Alexander etude by Mio Morales. I highly recommend that you, whoever you are, <laughs> do the cycle twice a day. Do it in the morning and do it in the evening and do it as your warm up, as you prepare to get online, as you get out your instrument. I was saying, usually I teach it as a warm up before practice and before performance to help with performance anxiety and to just clear out the mental, physical clutter that accumulates during the day so you don't bring that into your musical practice session. But I just realized this is the best warm up for doing your online teaching, which may freak a lot of you out. You may never have taught online before. Most musicians haven't. And it's like a performance the first few times. So you may find that doing the cycle before you turn on the video camera could be a lifesaver for you. <laughs> so I just really, really wanted to give you that tool. It's extremely powerful. If you didn't notice or feel anything this time, it doesn't matter. This is not about getting results quickly. It has a cumulative effect. And so I recommend that you do it for a week, twice a day, every day. 
to find out for yourself what the what the benefits are. Um, a few of the benefits that most people um, get from the cycle are that you have calm on command. <laughs> you have calm on command. You can access calm at, in a split second, anytime, anywhere. During the day, if you're freaking out because of the coronavirus, you can stop. You can stop what you're doing, and for a moment, you can check in with yourself and ask, where else do I seem to be easy? And you can do a mini cycle, once on each finger. So there are a lot of things you can do with the cycle, and um, too much to uh, give you now. This is what I do in my, my groups. Um, the cycle also helps you model calm for your students and their families. Very important, OK? Parents of children are freaking out. <laughs> We're all freaking out. So you need to model calm for the people that you're teaching. And you do, as a, as a teacher, you have an authority role, whether you like it or not. People look up to you. Your kids look up to you. Your, the parents look up to you. And so the more you can model ease and calm and balance in your life, the more you're going to help your students and their families to access that for themselves too. So you can share the cycle with them as well. Um, you can do the cycle in community, in groups. Okay, so I'm not going to talk any more about the cycle, but that really is the first super important strategy that you're going to need to get over this hurdle and transition to teaching online. You need to have a tool that helps you with your mindset. If you are stressed, you're not going to learn all the technology as easily. So do the cycle before you try to figure everything out. And everything is going to work better and faster, I promise. <laughs> OK, the second really useful tool that I just want to talk about briefly with you today is using Zoom, OK? Um, <laughs> you know, yesterday when I came on to do the Facebook Live, there was a different interface. and there was a possibility for me to do screen sharing. So I was going to actually show you my screen. And um, unfortunately, I'm not able to do that. I really am kicking myself that I'm not able to do that. But I do want you to know that it is incredibly simple to use Zoom. Now, you may be thinking, what's Zoom? I'm already lost. No, calm down. <laughs> Zoom is a free conferencing software that you can get online. All you have to do is go to zoom.us, zoom.us, OK? Then there's a free version. You can teach up to 40 minutes, I believe, um, on a free version. You don't have to invest any money in the software, which is really great, really, really, really wonderful. So you can get Zoom and start playing around with that. They have fantastic tutorials. Um, there are tons of things online that you can find like on YouTube, but really go to the Zoom site and look at their tutorials. It's really simple to get started with Zoom. Okay, and the, as far as the tech, you really don't need a lot. You need a camera, you need a microphone, um, but again, I'm not going to go into all the details in this um, session right now about functionality and practicality and tools. I just want you to know about Zoom especially. Um, with Zoom, you, get, you may get onto Zoom and see that there are all these tools at the bottom of the menu. You don't need most of them. All you need is to understand how the microphone works, how the sound works, how you can adjust your levels, and that's like one button. <laughs> one button that turns your sound on and off, and then there's the video button where you can see that very easily on any device. I like Zoom much better than Skype, even though they've improved Skype a lot over, the, over recent years, and it's much better now. <clears throat> I don't use FaceTime either, because Zoom just does so much of what I want to do with Zoom. You can share files through Zoom. You can't, uh, actually, no, I'm not sure you can, sorry, I may have misspoken there. Um, but you can have a little chat in the Zoom, so you can type things into your students if you need to do that. You can, here's a great advantage for using Zoom. You can record all of your lessons. You can record your group, you can have group classes on Zoom and it's not overwhelming unless, I mean, actually we, uh, we were teaching a group class this weekend, Mio, Mio and I, we were teaching a big group and we had about 100 people uh, at once in the group, I think 97 actually. 
Um, 97 people were on a Zoom call with us. And Zoom arranges it for you so that we, didn't, we never had more than 25 people on the screen at once. And you can easily navigate between one screen of 25 people and the next screen just by swiping with your cursor or depending on your device with your hand. So it's really actually quite easy to manage a large group. Now, most of the people watching this are not managing large groups, but there are our university music teachers out there who teach group classes. And I have, I have a former student right now that I'm thinking of in particular that doesn't teach um, music, but she teaches math classes and so forth. And they have huge lectures and they need to be able to teach large numbers of people. You can do it easily on Zoom and it's not overwhelming. Maybe a little learning curve in the beginning, but it's so simple. The interface is really clean and simple, very easy to learn. So, and when you're using it just for a couple of people or a small group, maybe you have a quartet <laughs> and you want to get them together to just to talk or to chat. That's something I'll talk about in a moment. Um, it's really nice to be able to see everybody at the same time on the screen. But most of you are probably going to be teaching private lessons. And then there's also a little button that you can push, push that you can push <laughs> that switches you between speaker view and gallery view. If you push speaker, whoever's talking gets the whole picture, right? And then the other person is just in the little picture over there. But you really see the whole screen becomes your student when they're talking. And when you're talking as the teacher, your student sees you on the full screen. It's really nice like that. And then if you want to have both of you visible at the same time, you just push gallery view. It's really simple. <coughs> um, but as I started to say before, you can record all of your sessions. <clears throat> and my students love that feature. I always give them the option. Nobody needs to be recorded, of course. Excuse me. <clears throat> but my students, they almost always opt to get a recording. And it's so nice because then, you know, sometimes a parent is sitting in the room trying to scribble down all these notes. Well, you they don't have to do that anymore. A student has to, doesn't have to worry about remembering everything because they get a recording. It's really nice. So that's one big benefit of Zoom. And the recordings get stored on the cloud and you can share them with your students. And there are a lot of really special things that you can do with Zoom. You can um, share your screen, which I was going to be able to do now, but Facebook is actually updating their live video interface right now. I found out yesterday when I was surprised by it all of a sudden, and I was allowed to switch back to the old one. So I actually switched back to the old one because it was time for me to go live. But now Facebook does have a feature where you can share your screen from Facebook Live. So, you know, we also have Facebook, which you know, it's not everyone's first choice for things like teaching. I don't teach through Facebook, except the things that I do for the public, but it's an option. You could even just teach through Facebook now. Um, you wouldn't want to do that on your personal page because then you'd be giving the world a free lesson, but there are other ways to do it, okay? So I'm not going to get into that, those technical, you know, specific things, but I just want you to know there's so much out there. You know, the coronavirus is horrible, but the timing could be so much worse because we do have all the systems in place. We have the internet and everything in place to be able to continue to do our teaching, continue to work, continue to do what we do and connect with people and have community, even though it's through this uh, screen. And that's also one thing, you know, it's so paradoxical to me how the internet has been maligned so much over the last you know many years since it's been out as how it is the cause of so much disconnection in our uh, culture in our communities and i totally agree with that and well not totally <laughs> i agree with that a lot to a very very large extent i agree it's so much better not to be on the screen 24 hours a day <laughs> to be outside playing running around and not be on the phones and i am totally like that i was so anti-technology you wouldn't believe it um, but now it's paradoxically our lifeline for a community and as we go into lockdowns and social isolation 
we need that kind of interaction and thank goodness, thank goodness we have the internet. So it's a very powerful, important tool that we can now use, thank goodness. Which brings me actually to my third strategy, um, which is um, connecting with your colleagues for information and support. Connecting with your students and their parents, um, those things are important too, but don't forget that you can connect with your colleagues, other people who are struggling with the same things that you're struggling with. And I, to that end, I invite everybody here, if you're not already a member of my free Facebook group, um, it's a group for musicians of all kinds, and it's called the Musicians Mind Body Practice Tribe. I would love for you to come join um, that group. And if somebody would be so kind as to share the link to that free Facebook group right now into the comments, uh, I'm going to put it at the description of this video later, but right now somebody could just share that link for, for people. I would really appreciate that. It's a free group. We talk about all kinds of things related to music making in there, and it's just a really very supportive group. So I'd, I want to give that to you if you're interested. So just to recap the things that I've shared with you today, and I will take questions um, briefly when I'm done. So if you have questions later, I can stay on a little bit for that. But I shared with you the three big mistakes to avoid as you're getting into this crazy online teaching world. Number one, don't panic. <laughs> one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is panic, letting your mind spin out of control because it's a downward spiral. And things are hard enough as they are. Don't let yourself go there. You've got to get control over what's up here as much as you possibly can. I can help, we, help you with that, all right? I, this is what I do for a living is helping people with their mindset. So if you need more support with that, you know where to find me. That's number one. Number two is trying to do too much at once. Uh, this is, I'm always guilty of this one. I, I love to do lots of stuff. I'm always, I always have new creative ideas and I'm always trying to do everything at once and then I get overwhelmed. So we don't wanna do that, especially in this situation where you're trying to learn new technology, you're picking up new skills, it's scary. You probably or possibly have a prejudice against uh, teaching online. So just take a little bit at a time, just the little doses, okay? You don't need to learn it all at once. All you need is the basics, okay? You need to learn how to get online, what system to use, what software to use. You need to learn a little bit about your setup, the lighting, the sound, you know, the, the hardware, the software, those types of things, but minimum. You can, you already probably have everything that you need to really get started or just almost what you need. So don't try to do too much at once. Take care of your energy levels. And then mistake number three is assuming that the quality of your teaching is going to suffer terribly because now you have to teach online. Don't go there. I mean, you don't really have a choice, many of you right now. Um, we don't all have the luxury of just not working for an extended period of time. So if you want to stay connected to your students, you don't want to lose them by saying, I know I just can't teach you now. If you want to keep your studio running so that you can keep having your income, then we've got to just accept the situation and, and also get curious about possible advantages you may not have thought of, because there are a lot of advantages to teaching online that I've discovered over the eight years that I've been teaching online, things I never, ever would have dreamed of. There are things that you can't even imagine, positive advantages to teaching online that exist. So open up your mind to the possibility that there could be a lot of silver linings to this cloud. So don't assume that it's all like doom and gloom and, and making everything worse. It's just not true, okay? In my experience, it's just not true. So part two, I taught you my three-step strategy for getting your online teaching working for you fast. Number one, getting in the right frame of mind and body for learning for you and your students um, with a cycle. Number two, um, I'm urging you to use Zoom. It is a fantastic tool. It's simple. It's easy to learn. And you can, it has a lot of bells and whistles, but it doesn't you don't see all of that. You can just use the basics once you learn three or four little techniques and uh, it's, it's very easy to learn. So I encourage you to use that. 
and then you can record your lessons. And um, if you teach lessons that are longer than 40 minutes, by the way, here's a little tip. You don't have to upgrade to a paid version if you don't want to. I have a paid version and I need that because I do all my teaching online. But for a long time, I just had the free version. And what I would do for an hour long lesson is I would teach for 40 minutes and then I would say, okay, uh, we need to take a break. We need to pause for a moment. And so I'm going to leave the meeting and I'm going to come back. I mean, I would, I would explain why. Uh, it's not just an arbitrary break to go get coffee. <laughs> so um, you say, well, we're going to leave the meeting for a moment and then I'm going to restart the meeting. And you can do that within seconds. Leave the meeting and start a new one so that you, it's just a separate recording. Um, but then you can teach for as long as you want. You just finish after 40 minutes and then you start another 40 minute segment. So you can do hour long lessons, you can do 10 hour long <laughs> workshops if you really, really want to on a free version of Zoom. So don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money getting online. You probably, like I said, you probably already have most of what you need and there are free things out there to use these days. So um, the third um, part of my strategy is to support you with community connect with your colleagues, connect with your students and their families, and um, especially with your colleagues who are going through the same kind of thing for more information, hive mind, right? Get more information and support from the people who've done it before, okay? That's why I'm here, because I have a lot of experience and I just wanna share it with you all. So you know where to find me as well. If you just take away one thing from today's class, I want you to know I really want you to know that you can teach online. You can do it without hassle, without overwhelm, and without compromising your high standards of education. You can do it. It's simple, it's totally doable, and it can actually be a lot of fun. So I have developed a strategy for you today, and my big question for you right now is, how can you apply these things that I've shared with you to your unique teaching situation? Because we all have slightly different teaching situations, right? How are you going to apply these things to your teaching situation? And how are you going to do it, you know, quickly and with ease, without all that hassle and overwhelm? How are you going to do it? So you could you know, try to do it all yourself and you'd probably waste tons of time and energy and effort trying to figure it out, trying to figure it all out for yourself. You could do that. You can go online and Google everything that you could ever possibly need, but there's so much out there on the internet right now. It's very easy to get overwhelmed. So you could absolutely do that, um, but you would probably waste a lot of time and energy and it could be you know, it could be overwhelming. So you could do it that way, and many of you probably will. Or you can you can learn from me. <laughs> I'm just going to be really upfront about it. I have an online training that I've put together. It's called Teach Online Now. Get your studio onto the internet fast. So I want to share with you now what I'm talking about. And I'm going to give you the link. I was going to actually show you the page that I put together, but I can't do that. I thought I would be able to do that, but I am not. So um, I'm going to paste the link to this page. It's going to give you more details about what I can offer you um, to help you further. With, and in this, what it is, and I'm actually going to look at it right now myself. I'm going to come over here. Um, this is a three-part training that I've put together for you. And in this training, you're going to learn everything that you need to overcome your fears and get your virtual teaching studio up and running so you can keep earning a living, continue helping your students, and offer your students a thriving community online. You're going to learn all the basics you need to get your teaching up and running online with ease. It's taught in three modules. Module one, you get all the mindset help that you need. You get over your fears with proven mind-body techniques for quick relief of anxiety, worry, and overwhelm. I'm gonna help you get comfortable in front of the camera. I know many of you are performers, but even though I've been performing all my life, the first time I got in front of 
a camera and I was live with somebody, it was really uncomfortable. So I know what that's like and it's kind of a, a learning process. So I'm gonna help you get comfortable in front of the camera talking and being recorded also. If you're not used to having your lessons recorded, that's another hurdle to get over. I can help you with that. I'm gonna help you discover the advantages to online teaching and actually get excited <laughs> about new opportunities and help your students overcome worry so they can relax and be at their best for learning, practice, and performance. In module two, in mo module two I will give you the technology. You're gonna learn the basic technology that you need to get started, and you're gonna learn how to navigate simple software like Zoom that works great and is easy to use. You can get your studio set up with good lighting and better sound quality, although there's always a limitation. I'm just upfront about that. The sound quality is, is variable. Sometimes it's great and it's not always so great, but you just have to kind of learn how to adjust for that. I'm gonna teach you how to learn how to accept payments online. So the financial aspect of it, we'll talk about that. And in module three, we'll talk about community how you can build a, commu a supportive community for your studio, your students, um, to have a supportive learning environment. You can bring your students together in ways that you may never have done before. That is a huge advantage for building, you know, well, that community. <laughs> community support between your, your students and you. So you're leading your community and guiding them. Um, a very, very important part of this training is that you get access to a private online community of music educators. So I am creating a new Facebook group, which is private, just for this program. It's just open to music educators, all kinds of music, music educators. It doesn't matter if you teach little kids or university level. Uh, we're all kind of dealing with a similar thing. So. Um, I'm going to have a new community. I'm just going to start it today um, just for the music educators who are transitioning into online teaching, people like you who just need more information and support. So that's going to be kind of a 24-7 support place where you can go for more information and to connect with other teachers who are struggling and <laughs> maybe panicking <laughs> with stuff like this. And I'm going to be in there to offer a hopefully calm presence, <laughs> as well as some of my expertise. Okay, I won't be in there 24 seven, I promise you that, but I will show up as best I can to help you all. Um, so the other thing I wanted to share with you, uh, this is a training that I've put together. It's not a free training. It's a $97 program, but this is so urgent. This is so important. I really want you all to have it, who need it, people who can benefit. So between now and March 24th, I believe next Tuesday, you can get $50 off. So you can have this whole three-part training um, to get you online and up and running and going with confidence and feeling really good about yourself and what you're doing um, for just $47. So this is the page, the link that I gave you has that all set up and it's already set up with the discount, um, but that will go away, go away after March 24th. So um, I would recommend that you, you get that. Also, you wanna get into the community I'm, cre I'm creating soon. And you know, you're probably feeling a little bit of the pressure to get this started if you're not being able to contact your, and be in contact with your in-person students anymore, depending on where you live. But, I think at this point, probably everybody should not be teaching in person anymore at this point. It's just not safe for our community, for our world community. So I hope that answers or gives you, you know, things that you can use. I really hope that you'll consider joining this program that I created for you. And um, I can now stay on and just answer a few questions if they're coming up, but this is pretty much the end of this training. So I just want to thank you all so much for being here and staying with me through this training today. I hope it was useful for you. And I would also really ask you to share this video. I think you can share it easily from my page. I'm also going to put it on YouTube most likely. So 
please share this video with people who couldn't watch it live. And um, there are just so many music educators um, who could benefit from this. So if you could share it into the groups that you're a member of, depending on your instrument or whatever, you know, you know who needs it. So I would really appreciate it if you could help spread the word that there is help and hope <laughs> for music educators here. So thanks for being here. Now, are there any questions? I have not had a moment to even look over to the comments, so I'm going to hop over there now. Um, first of all, <laughs> I want to say hello to everybody, but it looks like there are a lot of people here. Um, Pete is here. He's the first comment I see. Pete says, getting a student who wants to learn what I want to teach is the problem. Now that is sort of beyond the scope of what I'm sharing today, Pete, <laughs> but, but I do have a really wonderful group program that is going to actually teach you this. So if you want to learn how to get your students to want to learn what you have to teach, then I would highly recommend, you know, I'd love to talk with you in person, actually. So why don't you, if you, if you want this, of course, if you want my help, and this goes for anybody here, if you would like personalized help from me, then please just message me. Just message me or email me at jennifer at artoffreedom.me. And um, I would be happy to chat with you about your personal personal situation and see if I can help you in some way. But but Pete, I mean, what you're saying is, is you're not alone. <laughs> you're not the only one that has this issue. So I would love to help you if you're interested in that. If you just get in touch with me. Um, let me see who else is down here. Esha says, um, if the quality, of, I hope the she says the volume of quieter speech is dropping out. Um, that may have been when I was doing the cycle and I actually was not saying all the words at one point. That's probably what happened. Oh, Pete asks, what are the words? Okay, the words, hopefully you got them as we went through the cycle, but it is actually important to do the cycle with the specific words that I'm giving you. And the question that you use in the cycle is, where else do I seem a bit easy, okay? Each of those words is important and has been chosen carefully um, because of the effects that it can produce. Um, so don't substitute the word feel, for instance. It's not where else do I feel easy, it's where else do I seem easy. That's a big difference, very crucial difference. You can do it that way, but you're just not going to get the I'm not going to go into to that. Just use the exact words that, that I gave you, and it's going to work best that way. So I hope that helps. Uh, hey, Valerie, I'm so happy you're here. Oh, and Valerie just she answered the question that I just answered. Thank you, Valerie. Appreciate that. Um, hello, Autumn. Glad you were here. And Pete asks, is Zoom better than Skype? Personally, I love Zoom, and I do not like Skype but that's my personal preference. Um, I really think Zoom is better for these purposes, but I haven't used Skype recently for anything like this, so I'm not the expert on Skype. I just know that everybody that, everybody that I know that does any kind of online teaching is using Zoom, and there's gotta be you know, a good reason for that, uh, and I'm sure it has to do with why I don't like Skype. <laughs> so, so yes, I would say the answer to that is yes. Um, sound quality seems very poor on Zoom. Yes, there are some things that you can do to work around that, but yeah, sound quality on anything is pretty bad. Oh, there is one other tip that um, a, a student of mine gave me and that I'm gonna pass along to you and I'm going to investigate this, but I haven't had time to do that yet. There is a software program, uh, you can just Google it. It's called Jam Kazam. And this is particularly interesting for musicians. And I have a feeling the sound quality might be better, which is why I wanna investigate it. But it doesn't do the same kinds of things as Zoom, so I'm not sure I would really want myself personally to use Jam Kazam. But again, I haven't investigated it. So, and my, uh, my student hadn't really investigated it either. So I don't have firsthand um, knowledge about Jam Kazam, but it looks really interesting for musicians. So I would check that out because um, there's potential there. So, 
Um, Janelle says, do you need to get a separate camera and mic, or can you just use the camera and mic on your computer and iPad? You can just use your built-in camera and mic. That's what I'm using right now. And it may not be perfect, <laughs> um, but it's, it's good enough, okay? And now you can upgrade to other things. You can use, yeah, I, I don't want to get into the specifics of tech, but you can do everything that you need to do with whatever you have, okay? As long as it's not an old <laughs> desktop without a video camera and a microphone, you obviously need video and microphone to do this work. Um, but I have taught my classes. I've taught group classes from my smartphone, believe it or not. It's not ideal because it's so small, but in a pinch, sometimes I've had to do that, and it works just fine. And I do have students that attend my classes from a smartphone because they don't have anything else, and that works just fine. You have to get a little creative um, with setup, but this works. Okay, and by the way, if you see me kind of shivering, it's because I'm freezing. <laughs> it's not because I'm scared, it's because I'm actually really cold. I should have turned on the heater in this room before starting this. Um, what else, I'm gonna see what else is coming up here. Stacia says, with Zoom, you can, just, you can adjust the camera and mic on your device. It's also possible to add a great mic. Yes, thanks for that, Stacia. Yes, absolutely. Um, Valerie, thank you for sharing my group. I really appreciate you putting the link there. Um, Lauren, hello. And let's see. Yes, Pete, every silver lining has a cloud. Absolutely. And I feel like that's what we need to do these days. We all have a choice. We all have a choice in how we respond to any situation. We can go into a panic and get worried and be all doom and gloom, and that's not going to help anybody. So the other alternative is to pause and ask ourselves, well, what do I want? What kind of an attitude do I want? And just pause and ask, where else do I seem a bit easy? And everything starts to open up, and you can calm down and think more clearly when you do that. So we can all do that for ourselves, and then we can help the people around us better when we do that. Um, Patria says, check out this YouTube on Zoom for better audio for teaching music online. Ooh, did you put a link to that? Yes, thank you, Patria. I am going to go check that out later. Thank you. I didn't know about that. Um, let's see. Patria says, Jennifer's right. <laughs> it's all possible. Keep open and easy. Everyone, students included, are on the same side here. Yes, thank you so much for that, Patria. This is not about people trying to get ahead of other people. This is about, this is a life and death situation. This is not a place where we need to be competitive, okay? I'm the first person to admit that I tend to get competitive because I was brought up that way. I was competing on the violin since I was this big and I was winning. <laughs> and, and at some point I stopped doing all of that and I shifted my whole life perspective in a very dramatic way. I pretty much quit music and didn't completely. I kept playing, but I got completely out of the professional competitive world and started thinking in a really, really different way, in a spiritual way, just to be open about it. And we are here together. We can't, we can't get through this without helping each other. So the people who have things to share, to give to people, I feel like it's our duty. It's like my responsibility to all of you out there to share what I know because it works and it wouldn't be right <laughs> if I just really didn't do that. I mean, it, it, it boggles my mind, actually, Patria, <laughs> you mentioned it, that there are people out there thinking that, you know, we're trying to like, take advantage of the situation. I mean, I, I am blessed that I teach online and I still have my classes going, thank God. But you know, this is not what this is about. So boggles my mind when I get negative feedback. <laughs> Thankfully, very, very rarely. Uh, but anyway, moving on. Janelle says, I'm most nervous about teaching my young students, which I have many. Most are still trying to figure out how to hold the violin and bow correctly, of course. In person, I do a lot of molding by touching them. Yeah, right. What tips are there for this teaching beginners and young students online? I'm guessing that I would, I was just gonna say, I was just thinking what you said next. I'm guessing that I would need a lot of help from parents. 
Yes. That's my gut response that yes, absolutely. But the good news is that parents, they have to be home. They have to be home now and they need things to do with their kids. <laughs> Somebody yesterday was just talking about how there are all these things popping up online to help parents know what to do with their kids, which is kind of sad. <laughs> But the parents need to be told how to handle their kids. Um, but I understand. Um, but yes, if you teach kids, you can ask your parents to help. Yeah, I mean, they're paying for the lessons. And it, it can be a, a beautiful bonding experience also between the parent and the child to help. And hopefully that would work out that way. But I think that would really help. Um, but there, there's a lot that you can do. Um, without your hands. And, you know, this is something that you know, my work as an Alexander Technique teacher um, and as a coach of these, these ideas, I teach people a lot about how the way you're, you're approaching your instrument needs to be creative and it needs to be experimenting. And so there, if, you, if you're less rigid about what you think is right about like the right way to hold the instrument or the right way to hold the bow. If we can start to be a little more, and I, I, I don't even know you, Janelle, so this is absolutely not personal <laughs> um, for anybody out there. there my perspective um, with the art of freedom method is that we are free and the body needs to be free to find the best way for the individual. And kids very often, when you help them to not have the fear and anxiety like of dropping the instrument, um, and you encourage them to play and be experimenting, the body will find the best way to do things. But that's kind of out of the scope. <laughs> I'm digressing. This is the type of thing that I help people with in my Alexander Musicians group class. So if you are at all curious about more ways to, you know, to help people without the hands, um, talk to me. I'd be happy to share more about that with you and talk about your situation, okay? I hope that helps a little bit. All right, so that's it for the questions that I'm seeing here. Um, that's good, I didn't even go that far beyond an hour. So <laughs> thank you so much everybody who has stayed here with me um, and who is watching the replay. Thank you for being here. I hope this was useful for you. Come on over to my free group, the Musicians Mind Body Practice Tribe, and be part of that community. And we're supporting each other in there. But if you want a really focused group, just with music educators, just music educators um, working on these issues specifically, then please, you know, consider purchasing the, my Teach Online Now course. And um, do it soon before the discount goes away. Okay, thanks so much, everybody. I wish you a beautiful day, and I hope you have fun thinking about this and don't dread it too much. <laughs> Think of it as a playful game that you get to learn, and just don't do too much, and you know, little bits at a time. And um, you do have support. Okay, I'm here for you. Enjoy your day. Lots of love. Bye bye.